Now, our guest tonight, Amethyst Rain, she shares a very personal relationship with the cards. And, and she's not attached to any traditional path. Amethyst Rain has been in the trenches, and she teaches you to really see the cards as an experience on the, as a whole. Not as a grueling memorization project that you'll, that you'll inevitably get frustrated with and drop at the next opportunity. Instead, Amethyst explains how she learned to view the cards and waste no time and waste no time doing it. Her descriptions of the cards and the relationships to one another and the querent are spicy and full of intelligence. This is definitely this book that she's written and her philosophy is for adults, make no mistake. So we'll, we'll, we'll we might have to do some bleeping out. <laughs> but it's an excellent way to gain a different perspective on tarot and the puzzle pieces that make up this art. Amethyst Rain is a professional psychic and spiritual feminist. She has practiced her own brand of paganism for the past 30 years and is a high priestess of the Bristol Wicks Coven. Amethyst is also a practitioner of holistic healing through Reiki, crystal therapy, and chakra balance. For more, more information on Amethyst, you can visit her website at www.ladyamethyst, and that's A-M-Y-T-H-Y-S-T dot webs dot com. Hello, and merry meet, Amethyst. And I'll give you a reading because I, you know, I just couldn't do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But people seem to expect um, psychics or tarot readers, they expect you to be super fantastic and everything to be over the top every time. And that's not the way this works. It just You it can just have your bad days. You can have your uh, off days. You can have your people you just can't click with or you can't connect with. I also won't read for people close to me. I won't read for my children and I won't read for my, my spouse. It's just, it's too close. Um, I think I give my best readings with total strangers, people that you know nothing about. Well, I have to admit, I do read for my husband because he begs me to. And, and then when I tell him something because he's in Aries, <laughs> he likes to say, oh, that's never going to happen. And then when it happens. <laughs> you have to oh, listen. gosh. So um, let me ask you. Um, so the tarot, you know, we know that giving the readings is a healing experience. And, you know, it can really move a person forward. And, you know, giving them the information, laying it all out before them so they can see it and they can deal with it. Um, but um, can you explain some of the ways you feel that tarot, other ways that tarot can heal people? Because you are uh, a healer. I, I, well, I, I don't know if you have noticed, but I practice witchcraft. And um, I practice a combination of Wicca and Hoodoo and green witchcraft. And I use tarot cards um, in mojo bags. I use tarot cards in mojo bags for healings, for love magics, and that type you of thing. Do you put cards uh, in there, or how, what do you? How do you do that? Yeah, I will put cards in there. I have used. I have decks that I that I just buy just for that purpose. So in case I destroy the the cards in the process, like candle magic, burn them in a candle. But there there are lots of ways that I use the energy of those cards um, in my own spiritual practices. And I don't know if I've run into anyone else who's done that or not. But in both of my books, in, um, in both of my tarot books, I have spells in the back that, and mojo bags for energy and connection with herbs. And That's very interesting. And, now, what yeah. about with Reiki? I mean, I know as a Reiki master myself, I know that, that you can put Reiki into anything. Do you ever put oh. Reiki into a reading that you're giving somebody or Reiki into a card if you're working, like if somebody asks you to, for example, you know, with the Reiki distance healing or something, like, mm -hmm. do you ever combine the card with a Reiki healing? No, I haven't. That's an interesting concept, but I haven't never done that personally. But I would imagine that, that would, you could do um, incredible things through that energy with the card because I believe the cards themselves have energy, but I still don't, I don't want to put so much importance on the cards that I give them power because the power is not in the card. It's in the no, mind. No, it's in the symbolism of the, of the card. Right. The symbolism and the mind of the person who's using them. But yes, um, um, I believe that you can connect with Reiki on, on many levels that way with the cards. And, uh, now and it's, as far as readings go, uh, sometimes readings turn into therapy sessions, actually. 
um, where where once you've read for someone and you get this information out there and you get them the possibilities for the future, it's like something in them, like a dam burst, and they just suddenly will start talking or they'll start crying or they'll just, they'll pour your pour their heart out to you and just you know, and it's it's um it's kind of a like a cleansing. Uh, and it's therapeutic and by the time you're done I I think that it has oftentimes started a healing process within each client you know if you run into someone who who has issues that would bring so it's those emotions unlocked a lot them. of things too mm -hmm. so how do you feel about you know we, we, when we're giving the readings and we're taught we're giving the positive information we're giving the negative information what is mm -hmm. you how do you feel as a straightforward reader that you need to present some of the negative stuff that comes up in a reading and, um, the most trouble that I have are with women in love um, uh, women will have a tendency to stay in very destructive and potentially dangerous relationships because they simply cannot make that disconnect. Um, it seems as though females can, can make tremendously strong bonds to their spouses and even under the worst circumstances, they still cling to that individual. So that's the hardest part I have is getting through to people who are in really bad relationships that this isn't good for you because a lot of times obsessiveness uh, comes into play in those circumstances. Hmm. So... <clears throat> How do you personally use the tarot cards in your everyday life? I mean, do you do you ever do a spread oh. for yourself? You put. Oh, yeah. I know you say you don't read for yourself, but do you ever like pick a I card do. or something I like do. that? I do. I keep a tarot journal, actually. Perfect. I love one. to hear that. Tell us about your tarot <laughs> journal. Um, I, I mean, how you do it near my bed, and like in the mornings or when I'm alone, I will pull a card for the day, and I'll jot down thoughts that come to me according to that card. Or I like to do cards by threes, and uh, and I just keep a keep track like a diary for each day, which cards you draw, and what sorts of events um, that pop into your head, or what sort of energy, and and it's so right, and, and so often the thing is that it doesn't give you, or my brain anyway, doesn't give me little tiny very specific particulars. I mean, like, on a day I get cards that tell me, like, the shit's going to hit the fan. It's just something is really going to be <laughs> total off. But I won't know what. But when it happens, and it will, then I say, aha, it was this. But I, uh, you know, I'm probably just not gifted enough to, to be able to pinpoint all that. It's just that I can see something coming and I know it's coming <laughs> and I don't know precisely what until it hits. But at least I feel that I'm prepared for it. So it's like a, it's like a dream diary, but a, a tarot diary. Oh, I keep a dream journal too. That is fascinating. If you that is yes, journal, it is because if you go if you've kept it long enough and you go past like over over the past year um, of your life and you read your dreams, you can see where all of your um, concerns lay. You can you can see kind of how your life was being affected by by certain people or circumstances. Um, you can even see how things that happened in your childhood might still pop into your head and be rustling around in there and stirring things up. It's really fascinating. But the trick is that everyone forgets their dreams, at least everyone I know. They forget their dreams so easily when you wake up in the morning that you have to keep that pad and pen like right, right by there. the bed. And Yes, don't say good morning to anyone. <laughs> just <roll over laughs> Immediately just write. Huh? Yeah, start writing before that disappears because it will disappear and it's really hard to remember. That is very interesting. I always, I, talking about dreams, I, I, I've, I dream a lot about horses that I've, that I've had that have passed over and then all of a sudden they're in my dreams again and they're in there and they're, I'm doing something with them and mm -hmm. it happens a lot. That happened to me last night as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. I think when that happens they actually come back like a spirit. Oh, 
Absolutely. Um, there are dreams where you make connections with people who have passed. Um, there's dreams that you have that are prophetic and they let you know something's coming. Um, then there are just those crazy little dreams that rifle through those files in our head and pick out all kinds of things. But there definitely are, are dreams where uh, there's past life dreams too. I've had a past life dream where it's just, um, you know when you've had a dream when it's not a normal dream, when there's more to it. You just, you will know it. I don't really know how to explain it. You'll know, but you'll know it and you won't forget this one. It will stick with you and it will stick with you for a long time. And speaking of dreams and the dream state and, and connecting on the super conscious level, um, I don't know if it's your philosophy, but it is the philosophy of a lot of people who teach tarot or ascribe to the tarot. It's like when you first get your first deck of tarot cards, you put it under your pillow so that you can dream with your cards. Um, have you ever done that or do you feel that that's helpful? Um, no, no, I haven't. Um, uh, as I said, I view the cards more as a tool. I have a very, um, a very realistic view. Maybe I don't, that maybe that's not the right word. The, the only thing I do with my cards that might be unusual is that I will lay crystals on top of my decks. When I have decks laid out in my shelf, I always have, uh, clear quartz crystals, um, laid on top of them. But I've and never why is that to enhance desk. it or to bring in communication? Uh, yeah, bring because in I know that crystals are, are receptors. They are receptors and they're energy generators. And yes, just to draw in energy for the cards, which will in turn should draw in energy to me so that I can interpret the cards. Okay. And what do you feel is some of the, and we talked a little about, about, about dreams and so forth, and tell us uh, what you feel are some of the astrological and the col and like the colorology and the numerology that's intertwined in the tarot. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the cards are numbered, and, and as every number is significant, like four is foundations. Um, I had a deck of cards today. And I'm, I'm shuffling them and the four of wands um, flew out. And I always, I always feel that if a card flies out of the deck, there's a reason for it. And so you set it aside and I turned it over and it was the four of wands. Mm -hmm. And four of wands is the four, number four to me, uh, means solid foundations. Um, setting a structure in place that's going to last. And I don't necessarily mean a material structure, but... Um, something figurative um also um this card was um especially attuned to me because i'm engaged so we're planning a wedding and it's a celebratory card and it often comes up in my readings for weddings and the number four is perfect for that card because what more important aspect of your life do you need to have those strong foundations for is the relationship you're going to have with your mate for the rest of your life. So, so the numbers on the tarot cards are important and I like to go through and, and uh, be familiar with that and connect with that too. Um, as far as astrology goes, I usually, I, I know there's astrological um, symbolism for all of the cards, but the ones that hit me most are the court cards because they are people, and um, and the people that I know and the archetypes on the cards and the astrological signs associated to them, it gives you um, a wide range of uh, perception into other people's personalities, and I find this fascinating. And there and there's always like positive and negative aspects. So when you're reading for someone and a court card comes up and I'll say, you know, you might know this person on this card and I'm going to tell you what their personality is like and you tell me, you know, if this connects with you. And and they're always kind of floored at the opposite um, aspects of it because, I don't know, are we trained to focus on the good side? But, but you have to look at people, you know, people have a little bit of each in them. We're, we're a little bit black and white and with shades of gray in between. But uh, that's how I view the astrology. That's where it seems to have the most impact for me is with the court cards. And what do you feel is the key to the, the tarot reading? Do you, look, do you view the suits as a key? Like if, when you put down your, um, your, your spreads, what, how do you, what do you view as the key to that, that 
reading right away? The key, the the suits do provide a clue to me. Um, lots of cups will mean that there's emotional issues or relationship issues. Um, wands or pentacles will be finances or business or money. Um, swords will be a conflict. Um, a person with a lot of contention and um, and unpleasantness in their life. So the suits do cue you in into what aspects of the person's life you should focus on and where those problems might be. Now, I know there's a couple different schools of thought, but do you read your cards when they're upside down or do you read them all upright? I do read reversals and usually it will have the opposite uh, meaning or generalization of the upright card but there's another way that I look at it because I look at the card visually and just let it tap into my subconscious sometimes when those images are upside down you'll see things that you wouldn't otherwise have seen hmm, I like that I like that because the reason why I brought that up is because in the tarot books you know it's always if they're reversed, it's always bad, you know? Oh, and no. And so people get a preconceived idea that if they see the card reversed, automatically it's bad. Oh, know? no. It just gives you a different vision of the images. And, and a, a, it's something new that can come to you. It's not bad at all, necessarily. Um, it gives you a different perception is all that it is. Um, you touched a little bit about like Wicca and witchcraft and natural magic and paganism and stuff and a little bit about, I know that a lot of people who are into, you know, are on the pagan path, are do read and tarot is um, like I'm pagan myself and we consider it to be our Bible because we consider that those things in the, that are contained within the tarot cards is kind of you know, a collective sim symbolism of, of, of the ages. Would you agree with that philosophy? I would agree. It's a symbolism of humanity. That's why the court cards and the personality types, the archetypes. Um, another thing interesting about, about the court cards is that they are also like psychological profiles, though, too. And um, sometimes when you meet a person... There will be, sometimes when I meet them, actually, there'll be a card that pops into my head. And I always kind of pay attention to what it is because it's like giving me little cues to their personality. This doesn't always happen, but when it does, I pay attention to it. Um, okay, I'm a, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You're going to pause for one minute for a commercial. Okay. A new era in psychic services has begun psychicaccess.com you can connect with our psychic advisors by telephone or chat 24 hours a day seven days a week all of our psychic advisors are interviewed fully verified and accuracy tested assuring you quality service we're living in some very troubled times right now more and more the world's problems are affecting us on a personal level you don't have to deal with this alone our highly accurate psychics Caring advisors and talented mediums can help with situations you are currently experiencing and can let you know what the future may hold for you. All new customers get a free six-minute reading. All you have to do is register. Why not visit us now and get a free reading at PsychicAccess.com. You were just saying, how many decks do you have, Amethyst? I have over 40 tarot decks. I always say wow. they're they're like earrings. You can never have too many. Oh, you can't. And there's so many fascinating ones out there too, huh? <laughs> oh, I know the artwork and um, and uh, sometimes like there was one that had the Wizard of Oz and the characters uh, <laughs> on it. Yeah, and yeah, there's a lot of interesting things. Uh, there's one that's geared like to the artwork is 1950s, like 1950s housewife. And, oh, you're uh, kidding. How, cool. Oh, I want that one. <laughs> you want that one? <laughs> you have to email me and I'll give you the link to it. I'm sure they have it at Amazon. Have yeah. you seen the Halloween deck that's all Halloween uh, characters? I have a couple of Halloween decks. I have the Witch's Tarot and I have a Halloween deck. 
Oh, that's really, those are really cute. Yeah. I love the Egyptian ones. I, I, collect, I sort of collect Egyptian ones. I have a lot of them. So. Yes. Uh, some that are collectible, I keep them in the box and don't use them. And others are like every day out on the table cards. And then, and then others I have that are used for other purposes if I'm making mojo bags. Doing that sort of thing. What would you recommend if somebody's to just somebody who is knows nothing about the tarot and would like to learn? Which deck would you recommend that they get? I would start with the Universal Rider White, a very basic deck where your court cards are your Queen, King, Knight, Page, and uh, and just save the other the other decks that kind of go outside the box. Save that for after your first introduction, and just go with a very basic deck. That would be my advice. So you get all the original, so because it depicts all the original <laughs> symbolism. Absolutely, absolutely, and you should become familiar with that before you do some of these real unusual decks and try to use them for readings. Right. Here. Now, the major arcana is, and the minor arcana, want to explain that to our audience? We uh, the major arcana are things that are going to happen in your life that you have no control over. It, it's kind of a big picture. The minor arcana are the little minute details, the things that you have the possibility of changing depending on your decisions. And your future totally relies on your own personal decisions and choices. The cards aren't going to set that for you. They just show you what might be. Um, everyone's responsible for their own lives and their own choices. I heard it once said that the major arcana was the law and that the minor was the carrying out of the law. It's probably a very archaic thought, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it kind of makes sense the way you explain it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the origins of some of the major arcana, do you have any insight into some of the origins of some of those cards? No, no, I don't. Only that, that it said that they were... Um, ancient cards from Egypt originally, but then it's also said that they were used in Italy as a, as playing cards at one time until they started um, to be used for divination. Um, Those damn Italians, I'm telling you. <laughs> I know. Got their fingers and everything, don't they? Oh, they do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, take well. your eyes off of them for a minute. <laughs> What now? I know you can't keep your eye. <laughs> yeah, you have. You gotta watch those Italians. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> when you're reading for somebody that you completely like, like, do you ever do phone readings or it's all in person? For yes, you? I do. No, I do readings over the telephone. Um, I like to do handwritten readings that I email to people, and a lot of people um, now that's have interesting for that Why kind of like reading that? that you couldn't connect. Um, but that's the easiest way for me to connect because it's quiet. I'm by myself, and um, it's just it's just a, um, an open channel for me with the cards. And and you can read for people long distance. You can read for people you don't know. You can read for people that you can't see and you don't even know what they look like. Um, it's it's got nothing to do with any of that. It's all that universal knowledge and being able to tap into it with your subconscious and using the cards as a trigger and that's all that it is and a lot of time the handwritten readings are the ones that are most point on that's interesting that you brought that up because a lot um, of times our clients ask us they, they then they're skeptical at some point oh no i tell you them don't know so you've never I, met I, me or how do you know this stuff from long distance but uh they're not understanding just what you said oh i know that's they do that i try to explain to them that it's like a type of automatic writing and that's what it is. As I'm turning cards and interpreting, I have a pen in one hand and, and my notebook, and I'm just turning cards and just writing down whatever is popping in. And then, and then I'll put the reading together, you know, and make it readable. But at first, it's just like automatic writing. And so that's just how like words and it. images and stuff like that, and words then you fill it in? Images and ideas, yes. Interesting. That's really interesting. So, 
Now, is there has there been anybody else in your family that reads the tarot or does any psychic work, or are you the only one? No, I am the only one. We have a. I have seven children, and um, you have seven I children. Have, yes. Wow. Have children. Good for you. <laughs> And uh, they each kind of have their own interests. They each have their own spiritual paths. I have some of a couple of my girls who are interested in tarot cards and they collect them, but they don't do readings for people. It's, you know, it, it's a very diverse group that I have. So. I think that to be a reader and to be a psychic, it's like you're drawn to it and it just never leaves you. Don't you agree? Yeah. Absolutely, it is, and it and and I think for a lot of us, it starts in childhood with things that we don't understand, things that we see, or things that we just know or feel, and and we don't understand it till we get older. And by the time we're older, we shut it off because it's not acceptable in our society or our culture. So it's like people who can open back up to it after you've learned what it is, and that it's okay, and that it's not harmful, is actually helpful. Um, so yeah. So in your book, Tarot for Grownups, uh, what type of information do you believe that you put out there that would make it just for grownups? Is it more mature subjects, oh. or is it? Well, tell us a little bit about that. It is. Uh, I I used and wrote that book from an adult perspective, dealing with adult issues. I was tired of these books for little kids, you know, or for teenagers to sit down and go through the cards. It's it's as though it was time for uh, the cards to be used at an adult level. And sometimes the adult world isn't always very pretty. And it's um, it can be kind of rough. And, and it can be kind of hard to look at things in a harsh manner. And that's how I, how I use the cards for that book and with that intention so adults can connect with it. Because our issues are more nitty-gritty sometimes. Um, and I didn't see any books out there that dealt with those, with infidelity and with um, marriage and with um, uh, um, issues with family and with sexual issues. And, and so that's kind of what I do in this book. That's interesting. So, for example, like what would be one of your, like give us a peek, what would, like a, a chapter, is it related to a card or how did you set it up? I actually looked at the cards as different groups. Like instead of every book starts with like um, the suits or the minor arcana and everything in order. I didn't want to look at it in order because my life is not in order and most people's aren't. <laughs> really? When's your birthday? Yeah. So I first I took love and relationships and I went through the deck and I pulled out every card that for me has some sort of connection with love and relationships. And then I looked at that card and I wrote down how I really felt about it without trying to whitewash it and without trying to um, keep myself from, um, uh, oh, what's the word I want? To keep myself from, from being so that I wouldn't um, make someone angry or offend someone. I just wrote down just whatever the hell I wanted that was my interpretation of the card. And I stopped thinking about what other people would think if they read it. So, and that's what I did with different sections of the cards, like for money or for employment, um, for family relationships. And then actually after the book came out and I read it, I thought, oh my God, you know, I can't believe I said some of that. But, <laughs> but that's a very interesting what, approach yeah. because that's really off the cuff. That's almost uh -huh. like you're, you're writing and you're reading at the same time. That's true. That's true. And I think it's different from it, uh, from any of the other books out there that I've read because they all seem to follow the same pattern. And I didn't want to follow that pattern because life is helter skelter and kind of, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's just messy. not neat and tidy and it doesn't fit in boxes. And that's how I wanted to look at the cards. That's interesting. So it was almost a channeling through the tarot in a way. Yes, it was. It was very cathartic, too, because I there's a lot more in there, if you read my interpretations of them, that have to do with my life and what we were going through at that time than what you would probably think. So it, it, it was a cool experience, actually, for myself in writing it. I think that us 
as psychics and readers, and I think I can speak for all my co-hosts as well, that when we are going through a specific issue in our lives, we tend to draw people to us that are going through the same thing, and so we end up seeing a, a better perspective of that. Don't you agree? Absolutely. We, uh, we draw to us. Um, I always believe that um, people come into our lives in different times um, and different phases because we're meant to be with them for, for a particular reason, to learn from them or to grow with them. Mm -hmm. and, and there's reasons that people come together. And... Um, Yes. Yeah, there are. So, it, it, it makes an impact. I have a lot of comments on the chat with my co-hosts about your birds. Are you, do you have birds? I can hear them in the background. I'm <laughs> sitting outside on my back porch, actually. Under, How nice is like that? Apple trees, maple trees and yeah. <laughs> so you can hear the birds. I know. I think it's very refreshing. It's awesome. It's a. It's a nice, especially since we're talking about the tarot, which is, which is life itself. You know, uh -huh. absolutely. And, and so, do you have? Do you plan another book on the tarot, or, or um, is this, on the, is this it working, for your tarot books? Uh, well, no. I'd never say never. I learned that. Um, I am working on a fifth book. It actually has to do with um, feminine spirituality. And so I want to try to get that book done by the beginning of next year if I can. And my life is kind of like, <laughs> my life is kind of crazy right now. So it's very hard for me to concentrate on writing because um, I'm going to be getting married at some point. Yay. Uh, well, congratulations. Yay, you're welcome. And so my, my focus is, it's very hard to focus at all right now, actually. My main focus is the man in my life right now. Isn't that? Well, like. I like to hear that I, because it's important <laughs> for us to have our soulmates. And they come to us yeah. at different times yeah. in our lives. And it Absolutely. feels to me, I'm just picking it out of the universe that he probably is your soulmate or at least one of them. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, totally different for it to be <laughs> at my age and to be... Um, um, to be in a relationship at this stage of life and to meet someone that you feel so connected with. There's like, it's a connection you can't explain. I've, I've never experienced this with anyone else. Well, everybody's uh, timing is different, right? Everybody's timing is different. You had, you had mentioned, uh -huh. and, and yeah. for, I know that the audience and the people who are listening, they're going to look up your information. And you had mentioned that you were entering into your crone stage, and I can relate because so am I. And that's the wisdom stage for women. Correct? It, yes, it is. I'm 55. Very special. So, uh, so it is. I love this stage of life, actually, because you can kind of like you're standing on a on a mountain in a midway point, and you can look back and you can look forward. And I think this is the perfect time to connect with someone that that is is your soulmate, someone that you can you can kind of hold hands with them at this stage of life and move forward into the last phase. And I believe that I'm meant to be with this person in the last phase of my life. So, so it's kind of like um, a milestone. And, and this phase of life for women is so cool. It's like we come into our own. Women bloom after menopause. No woman should ever be afraid of reaching this stage of life because this is like, this is what you've worked for your whole life to get to this point. And um, it just keeps getting better and better. So no more whining over hot flashes, right? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to remember that because I'm almost there myself. <laughs> Life is good. Yeah. So we talked about using the tarot in everyday life and, you know, some of the lessons that the tarot have for us and, you know, if you were to like pick a tarot card that was kind of a good tarot, you know, like you wanted to, exp you know, one of your favorite, let's, let's pick a major arcana. May let's talk a little bit about the major arcana a little bit. What are some of the, the cards there? Let's pick a few here. Like what the sun card, that's probably the most powerful one in the deck. Do you think as far as positive mm -hmm. energy? Like positive energy. It's, it's happy, happy, happy. There's, it, it negates anything negative in a reading. 
Um, it's kind of a joyful card that lets you see you can make it through the storm. It's like the light at the end of the tunnel. It's kind of that kind of card. And you can't ignore it. It's kind of like a spaniel dog that just comes out and it just leaps all over you. And so it's a little <laughs> strong for some people, actually. They can't take all that glowy happiness. You have to tone it down for them. But that's how that card strikes me. And then then the most controversial of all the cards is the death card. People always get freaked out when they see the death card in their spread. Can you Can you kind of explain the death card? I, I have seen death um, in readings, but it's been through a combination of cards, not a single card. And most of the time, the death card has nothing to do with net death. It has to do with amazing, um, huge transitions in your life, um, huge transitional changes that will just come up and smack you in the face. You, you can't ignore them. It's like, it's like milestones. It's like this person is going to reach a milestone, and there's just going to be... Uh, a 180 degree shift in their life and that's what that card generally uh, means when it comes up in my readings but I have gotten that card in conjunction with the ten of swords and the tower and usually when those three cards come up um, it, it points to a death a physical I, death I, I never a physical death but I have never pointed that out to anyone I think in my in my book, I relate an incident that I had with a friend that I read for, and those cards came up, and and she was a reader too, and she knew, and we looked at each other, and we just we knew, and we said a name together, and about five months later, a very young member of her family was killed in a car train accident, and it was the person whose name we had said together, so, you know, death shows up in tarot cards but very very seldom and it's not something that I that I want to divulge to people right you have to counsel people in, in a certain right. way which then they can be prepared mm -hmm. now what about the lovers card now that is there's misconceptions oh, the, about the lovers oh, card God, I love that card it's like uh, oh did you read in the book what I how I described that card because I don't think I can say it <laughs> <laughs> is it a bleep bleep? <laughs> it's a bleep bleep. Uh huh. It's a like okay, that. well, try it. Like let's hit, let's uh, give us the, uh, <laughs> the the G rated version. <laughs> oh, I just call it the I can't keep my hands off you. F me again card. It's like it's <laughs> like that crazy intense energy in new relationships when you can't touch enough and you can't kiss enough and you can't have enough. Sex. You could just, if you could devour that person, you would devour them. It's that kind of crazy hot energy that comes through. But not necessarily for me. love, though, more lust, right? It's lust. It's good old fashioned rolling in the hay sex. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Amethyst. <laughs> I would love to be able to talk to you for the for longer, like hours. I'm sure we could converse, but uh, we're at the end of our our, our interview right now. I really want to thank you, I and mean, I have a lot of respect for your knowledge. And oh well, thank you for having me. This has been fun, and I've enjoyed talking to you. Yeah. So you know what? I want to I want to wish you a good night and blessed be. A blessed be to you, Brenda. Hello, my name is Res Miranda. If you're having relationship, career, or life issues, I'm inviting you to experience what it's like to have access to professional, highly accurate psychics and spiritual advisors you can trust to care and help you. Register now to get your free six-minute reading by telephone or chat. Get answers. Get access. Psychic access. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. PsychicAccess.com.